Do you know what causality is? It's the principle where everything that happens is because of a certain cause. Sometimes it's referred to as the cause and effect theory. As a society, many of us have adopted this line of thinking because it seems logical. It gives us a sense of understanding. But what if cause and effect was actually bullshit? What then? Let's find out. From Phil Svitek comes a weekly digital series where he shares his insights, concepts, and findings learned during his 15-year journey of working in the entertainment industry. Each lesson offers you a roadmap to overcome the challenges that all artists face on the path to success. Welcome to a Phil Svitek podcast. Greetings. I'm so grateful you're joining me today as it's my pleasure to help creatives like you master mental fortitude. The reason for this is because it takes way more than just talent and luck to succeed in the entertainment business. Now, before we really get going, I'd like to take the time to invite you to subscribe to this series if you haven't done it already. Once subscribed, you'll be alerted to new lessons that I post. Thank you if you just subscribed. All right, let's begin first by examining a section from The Matrix Reloaded where I was first introduced to the idea of causality. Don't worry, it's not really a spoiler of any kind if you haven't seen the movie, though I highly recommend it. You see, there is only one constant, one universe, it is the only real truth, causality. Action, reaction, cause, and effect. Everything begins with choice. No, wrong. Choice is an illusion created between those with power and those without. After my initial viewing of the full movie, I grappled with this concept, especially the portion about choice being an illusion. If that notion was true, it meant that I was a byproduct of my environment. It meant I didn't have any control over my own life. All I could do was try to understand why events took place in my life. And that's a sad feeling because I couldn't alter them. I just had to accept them as they were. It wasn't until recently that I actually realized Morpheus was right and the Merovingian was full of lies. Everything does begin with choice. Part of how I got to this conclusion was because I realized each one of us is a storyteller, as Don Miguel Ruiz would call us. Our ancestors formed certain beliefs and passed them down across multiple generations, and these so-called stories were imparted onto us as truths. But they are, as the name implies, just stories formed at a time when we didn't know any better. Up until the mid-20th century, there was no contradictory evidence to go against the idea of cause and effect at least scientifically speaking. The mystics throughout history knew many of these so-called new truths. They just couldn't prove them through science. But along comes quantum physics and bam, this field of study has opened up a whole world of possibilities and explanations, quite literally. And as the field of study grew and grew, along comes a man named Joe Dispenza who posits the idea that our mind can affect matter. I think, therefore it exists. This is a vastly oversimplified version of things, and by no means do I claim to be an expert on this stuff. At least, not yet. But even the cursory knowledge I've gained so far on the subject matter has affected my state forever, and it can do the same for you. What you have to understand first and foremost is that many of us, including me, have limited our thinking severely. Why? Well, because we've bought into the stories of our ancestors, our parents, and society. Here's a lie you've probably bought into. Past experience can predict the future. No, it can't. Another lie is we're not perfect. Who says we're not? I'm perfect just the way I am, and so are you. We can choose to better ourselves, but that doesn't mean we're imperfect. It's just part of the human journey. Causality is also false. We actually have the ability to alter our realities just by thinking about it. How the hell does that happen? Through practice techniques, we can essentially rewire ourselves and therefore affect our surroundings. Sounds woo, doesn't it? but it doesn't have to be if you open yourself up to it. Joe Dispenza was hit by a vehicle while he was on a bike. Experts told him he'd never walk again and that he needed surgery to get somewhat better. He rejected the procedure and about a month later, he was walking no different than me. How does something like that happen? Extreme focused concentration. Our bodies can do incredible things, but our thoughts oftentimes block it from happening. We think it can't happen, so it doesn't. Conversely, if we think it can happen, it does. I'm not saying that if you believe you can fly that you will, but I am saying that our bodies have an incredible network of chemicals and electricity flowing within it, and by merely altering the way we perceive certain things, it can alter those currents. Think about it. When you're feeling sad, how energetic do you feel? Not a lot, right? 
But if you're happy, you feel lively and ready to move and do something. You feel creative and ideas seem to naturally come to you. Do they not? Tony Robbins has a saying that where focus goes, energy flows. This is what Joe Dispenza is talking about. Shift your focus and you can alter your state. Too many of us blame outside factors for bringing us down. We don't have to be victims. Problems are only problems if we allow them to be. Sure, we'll all face obstacles in our lives, but they don't have to affect us in a way that they have before. We can choose to not have them affect us and just deal with them on a much more surface level. For a while, I had to deal with some DMV paperwork. I kept going back to DMV over and over to handle all the bureaucratic rigmarole they put me through. At one point, there was an issue with an original document that was very important. The issue was that there was a mistake on the date. I didn't cause that issue. The DMV actually made the mistake. Their mistake, but I had to deal with it. It was literally one hurdle after another, and I swear if I hadn't done as much work on myself as I have by now, I would have lost it. I would have screamed and I probably at some point would have tried to punch someone for all these complications. But I knew I had a choice. I call it striving for the better nature of myself. And I did. I chose not to let it affect me and instead to do what I had to do. That's the power of this line of thinking. The cause was dealing with the DMV, but I didn't let it affect me. There was no effect. Had I bought into that line of thinking during this ordeal, it would have affected me in so many ways. My creativity would have diminished, my, my work ethic, my energy levels. It would have just trickled down probably until I reached depression. And trust me, that's a road I've been on. It's a road many of us can get to quite easily, which is unfortunate, if we choose to believe that every cause has an effect and that our surroundings dictate our behaviors. They do not. Why is this important for you to really understand as a creative? Well, first off, we're talking about your life. Secondly, this directly affects your pursuits. Too many people in our society, maybe even you right now, are looking for external factors to make them feel better. Too many guys think I'm a concept or I complete them or I'm gonna make them alive. I'm just a fucked up girl who's looking for my own peace of mind. Don't assign me yours. This could include drugs, love, media, anything really that's external to yourself. There's a Canadian theorist Marshall McLuhan, who came up with the idea that the medium is the message. And what he meant by that was, we are forever affected by the things around us, the physical things. In fact, one of the examples that he gave was, just by the simple shape of a doorknob, it affects and alters you because of how you interact with it. So if it's a round doorknob, you know, you have to put your hand around it and then twist. If it's one of those, um, more of a lever, you interact with it differently. So literally the medium, whether that be something as simple as a doorknob to the media we consume, affected people in such a way. And it was a very big principle at the time during the 50s. And again, it reinforced this idea of cause and effect, but it's bullshit. And this begs the question, how do you alter your state, your environment? How do you rewire your thinking? Gratitude, that's a big one, simple in concept, but not enough of us are ever really grateful. I'm talking about real gratitude based on the things that you can replicate anywhere. I'm grateful that I can breathe, that I can walk. I'm so thankful that I can go outside and see nature. Gratitude is a form of love and the closer we operate to love, the more of a natural flow we'll create in our bodies. Everything will work in tandem. We often separate the mind from the heart, but what if they were the same? Lots of healers I know advocate keeping a gratitude journal where each day for about five minutes, you journal all the things you're thankful for in your life. I'm encouraging you to do just the very same. In fact, to really kick this off, go ahead and comment with 10 things you're honored to have in your life right now. This way, it'll spark ideas for anyone else learning this lesson in case they're stuck thinking about what they could be grateful for in their life. Meditation is another way you can alter your state. Yoga and exercise are two others. The first two, the gratitude journal and meditation, help you to rewire your system, while yoga and exercise helps to flush out the body of negativity. It really is remarkable what you can accomplish with these four things. In time, where you can really step into this and take it to the next level, is you set intentions. What do you want in life? Be clear about it and envision it as if it's already happened. 
This is actually how Joe Dispenza was able to heal himself. He set his intentions very specifically. He focused so deeply that he envisioned his spine healing, and it came to pass. The incredible thing about this is that he replicated this phenomenon with thousands of people, all documented scientifically. You might have heard of something like the laws of attraction. This is it in action. If you think something bad is going to happen, you will attract it. If you think something good will happen, well, it will. We don't necessarily know when or how, but it will. It's important for us to understand this and to choose the better natures of, of ourselves, because if we don't, our unconscious selves will dictate it for us, which oftentimes is not good. At least it wasn't for me. Much of the same way you set your intentions for work, set your intentions for yourself. And yes, this includes the mind, the body, and the spirit. They're all one. If you don't, you will walk through life not being in control. You'll be a slave to the so-called cause and effect when in reality, you won't have to be doing that. The other aspect of this is staying present. Many of us go through life distracted. We leave the TV on in the background while working. We listen to music while working out. We check our phones nonstop even when we're with friends. I told you Tony Robbins says, where focus goes, energy flows. Consider what happens when your focus is fractured. Does it not mean that your flow of energy becomes fragmented too? It certainly does. If you ever felt like you're not accomplishing as many creative projects as you can, then this more than likely is the biggest culprit of that. Discipline yourself and rid yourself of distractions at least when it comes to your work. Start there and see how it can snowball. See for yourself how much work you can actually get done when you're not distracted. In fact, download the Thrive app which prevents you from going on your phone for at least a set time. Type in an hour and then for the next 60 minutes do your creative work. You'll feel amazing over time. I also want to point out that distraction can come in the form of time traveling. Anytime you think back to the past and dwell on it, that's time traveling. Your reality is shifted away from the present. You're distracted. You're no longer focused on what's at hand. So don't do that. Here's one final part that is a key component to all of this. Many people that do this work, and I've witnessed it firsthand after Tony Robbins seminars, are on such a high after changing their state. But the problem is that it doesn't last. Why not? Because they went back to their old environment. After the seminars, they do the same things as before, and the high is therefore short-lived. That doesn't mean after such an alteration in your life that you have to move to a new apartment and change your friends. No, you have the power to alter your environment based on your thoughts, remember? The way to do this is to keep this in mind in your daily consciousness and not be a victim of your natural hardwired state which can literally be self-centered and blocked off from the miracles of the world around you. Additionally, vary routines. Don't literally do everything the same as before. In order to get different results from life, you have to try new behaviors. This can be both large or small. So please don't fall into the trap of habitual patterns. Work hard to alter them. This might sound like I'm full of shit. There's shit everywhere. There's shit everywhere! You're entitled to think that. You might think that I'm just another storyteller. And you're not wrong on the second part. But I ask you, what have you got to lose? All this really requires is five minutes a day of journaling things you're grateful for, past, present, and future, five minutes of meditation, and exercise. Even if it's as simple as walking every day. It's about staying present and bearing the patterns of life you feel frustrated with. The return on your investment, as business people say, is incredible. But see for yourself, be the storyteller of your own life and create the infinite possibilities that are truly available to you when you don't limit your thinking. Here's a quote from Men in Black that I revisit to be a reminder of what is really possible in life. 1,500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was the center of the universe. 500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat. And 15 minutes ago, you knew that people were alone on this planet. Imagine what you'll know tomorrow. And yes, please do imagine it. If you think it, it can happen. For more on the notions presented here, I highly encourage you to watch some Joe Dispenza videos or read his books. He has one called You Are the Placebo, and his most recent one is Becoming Supernatural. And also check out Don Miguel Ruiz's The Voice of Knowledge book. Links are all in the show notes. And here's where we end this lesson but please feel free to click over to any of the numerous lessons I've created just for you. I have so many you can check out along with other free resources. 
All you have to do is go to my website at BillCTech.com. Lastly, a huge, huge thank you to the people that helped make this episode financially possible. If you too would like to support this show, you can either head on over to my Patreon page or support some of my merch from my store. Links are down below as well. Or you can just tell a friend about this show and we can build a great community of like-minded creatives. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to tune in. I'm at Phil Svitek on social media and I'll see you next time. Bye.